Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the May 6th meeting of the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. Uh, first item on our agenda is a um, tax abatement hearing. Uh, I will refer to Mr. Twining from the Community Development Department. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Ron Twining, T-W-I-N-I-N-G, and I'm the Community Development Director for the Board of County Commissioners. We're pleased today on behalf of Mayor Anderson with the village of Sheffield to uh, bring to you a tax abatement that they've worked out with a company called Old Castle, representatives from that company, Jim Jurgens and Kevin Calandra will be here this or are here this morning to uh, to speak to that and representing Mayor Anderson is Melanie from her office as well. What this basically is is a 10-year tax abatement at 60 percent on a 15 million dollar project and it's going in we're happy to say on 40 acres of the former Nissan plant. Um, they are building 37,000 square foot for a paving plant production and 7,000 square foot on a bagging operation. You'll hear more about that in a, in a little bit. What we have is the creation of 40 full-time jobs over a three-year period and four part-time jobs that have been guaranteed. The school districts involved, both the Sheffield, Sheffield Lake School District and JVS, have been notified and have accepted the uh, the tax abatement, but they've done that in accordance with the uh, requirements of the ORC. County Prosecutor Innes has looked at that um, on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, as so have our staff, and we are recommending support for this. The village has also approved this by ordinance, I think it was 1972. So at this point, I will turn it over to Kevin, and he would make a presentation, which is at your desk. Thank okay. you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Morning. Morning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about Old Castle in general, kind of give you some background and some information, and then I'll uh, turn it over to Jim Jurgens, and Jim will talk specifically about the current prog project that we're talking about. Uh, I'm the general manager for uh, Northeast Ohio. And uh, as I mentioned, Jim Jurgens will be the project and operations manager. Jim will also run the facility. Scott Stratton is the vice president of development for our Midwest division and could not be here today. Uh, who, so who is Old Castle? Well, Old Castle is a division of CRH, which is a holding company out of Dublin, Ireland, but it's a $10 billion multinational company. And we, do, we have three core businesses. And we're really focused on concrete and all concrete products. Uh, we're going to become, this facility become part of the Architectural Projects Group, which has four regions, the Northeast, the West, the South, and the Midwest. We'll become part of the Midwest Division of the Old Castle uh, branch of CRH. So what do we do? Well, we do distribution. You've probably seen a lot of the types of uh, activity that we do. Uh, DIY stores, home centers, and specialty shops, and things like that. Again, focused only on concrete products. We also do materials. Um, cement, aggregates, asphalt, surfacing, ready-mix concrete, and things like that. Again, what we're discussing today is CRH and Old Castle in general. Jim will talk specifically about the project as we go forward. I'm giving you some background information. And then building products, and this is primarily what this particular facility will be focusing on, which will be concrete blocks and pavers for the DIY and for the commercial use. I want to talk a little bit about the Old Castle values. Um, you know, we have, Old Castle has four values, and these things are the core values that we have in everything that we do. We want to create a great place to work, and we want to attract and retain the best employees, and that's one of the reasons why we're excited about this particular area. We also want to deliver exceptional value to our customers, 
and uh, develop a large base of loyal customers. Currently, we are the largest uh, producer of concrete products in, in the United States. Uh, obviously, it's important to deliver financial results um, so we can grow and share and reinvest and share that with our employers and also to be a good neighbor. And that's one of the things that's really important to us about this particular project. We feel it's a great partnership between Old Castle and the village. In terms of our daily principles, we stress safety, quality, productivity, housekeeping, and preventative maintenance. And these are things that every Old Castle employee, whether it's uh, a, a factory worker or a general manager, um, believes in and, and gets training on. A side note on training, um, we actually conduct about 40 to 80 hours uh, a year of annual training with all of our employees also. We're, we heavily invest in training. The next page talks a little bit about where we are. As we talked about, we're a large company. This gives you some idea of where some of our locations are in both Ohio and in the continental United States. Let's talk a little bit more about the Midwest. The circles that you see are the current um, facilities that produce this type of product in the circles. Uh, one in Milwaukee, uh, excuse me, outside of um, uh, Milwaukee. Uh, one in Chicago, one in Kansas City, one in Detroit, and one in Indianapolis. The proposed facility will actually be the uh, new facility which will serve the Cleveland, Columbus, uh, Erie, Pittsburgh, and Toledo markets. I'm going to turn it over to Jim Jurgens, but one thing I, I, uh, before I, I go, one thing I would like to say is that um, we have really enjoyed uh, the opportunity to, to uh, work closely with the village on this, and it, it, so far it's been a great partnership, and, and we look forward to continuing that. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like morning. to tell you a little bit about the project itself. Um, it's a $13.5 million investment with another million and a half in inventory. Uh, it's concrete pavers uh, for and, and bagging uh, products for retail and residential use. There'll be two buildings on the property, a 37,000 square foot building. There'll be one machine in there that uh, uh, hydraulically presses out the pavers all day long. And there'll be a 7,000 square foot building which will bag uh, the decorative rock and stone. Uh, basically, it bags about 1,000 pounds a minute of uh, bagged uh, stone, sand uh, that you would buy at Lowe's, Home Depot, things of that nature. As uh, Kevin mentioned, we'll be part of the Midwest. Uh, Cleveland is a good spot for our distribution. It's uh, 40 acres of the old Nissan site, and you see the areas that we will service. We're looking to add 20 to 40 new jobs in three years, plus the number of countless visitors to the area, including aggregate deliveries, outbound freight, miscellaneous suppliers, and other temporary employees. A little bit about the business, there's some seasonality. Um, we run full production year round, and we also ship year round, but we do 90% of our business in March and June, March through June. But we do produce all year round so that we fill our yard up and we're able to meet all our requirements during that peak season. All of our processes are fully automated. And I kind of outlined the basic process for uh, each of our two products. The bagging operation, basically we get aggregate trucks or rail cars in. We then uh, put them into the bagging machine and then you can see the kind of the fill rate there. All these products are automatically stacked and, put, and then our guys take them with tow motors and put them out into the yard. And the paver process is uh, somewhat similar and aggregates arrive uh, via truck. We load them into a mixer, mix the uh, cement with the rock, gravel, water, color. Uh, it is then put into a machine, which I said hydraulically stamps out the pavers. They're then cured for 24 hours in a chamber, and then they're automatically stacked as well and taken out to the yard. The next couple slides just show you a little bit of uh, what the finished product uh, of our building should look like. Uh, what you're seeing is a Bonner Springs, Kansas facility that just was finished in December. Our building will look similar in structure, size, color. Uh, one notable difference is if you see the large silo that says Old Castle on the side of it, we will not have that uh, as part of ours. That is a special um, blending and mixing process that they have that we will not have. Same thing with the second picture. And then the next three pictures kind of show you the internal operations. Uh, I, to be honest with you, when I joined the business, I thought it was going to be dark, dreary, dusty plants, and it actually isn't. It's very, it's fully automated. The machine that you're seeing in there is a uh, four to five million dollar machine. Automatically stamps, stamps out the pavers, cures them, loads them onto pallets. Guys don't even touch. The only time our people touch the product is when they're doing QC checks on them. And the last slide is kind of our feeling about the Old Castle. We feel we'll be a good neighbor. It's a good place to work. It's a good investment. We're a good supplier. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioners, I would also like to highlight and, and applaud 
uh, Mayor Anderson for her effort. They they understand the uh, the condition of the finances at the Sheffield Sheffield Lake School District, and it is a tough time up there. Um, originally, the request was for 70% abatement, and when they really got down and looked at the number, the treasurer and the mayor um, looked at what it would mean in revenue to the school district and then they looked at that 70% and actually decided that if they could get a $25,000 annual payment made at the end of the year or prior to the 15th of January every year to the school district direct by this company that that would uh, be comparable to the school so that they wouldn't lose as much uh, Revenue. So the company has made a 10-year commitment at $25,000 annually to the school direct. That amounts to an additional $250,000, and we are delighted about announcing that and, and want to congratulate both the company and the mayor for, for doing that. And the last thing is we recommend support and approval for this. I uh, need to tell you that we first got contact of this in June. Um, November, it really uh, got exciting. We got the uh, mayor involved, I think it was in October and November. Brian Barker and Rebecca Jones have been the two people at the county that have led this through um, with the governor's office in, in Cleveland as well. So we think this is a, uh, a good situation for the county and for the village for property that has been used in the past for industrial use and is now vacant. So again, we would recommend support and approval. Thank you very much, Mr. Twining. Do the board members have any questions or comments? I have none. We have not. I'll move for approval of the resolution as present. I'm sorry. I'll second. Oh, I'll second. Discussion. A uh, question by Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth Romix Oberlin. This is pure curiosity. If the plant is so highly automated, what will those 40 workers be doing? Would either of you care to respond? That's a great question. Um, would you come to the microphone so we can see you on? <laughs> Sorry about that. My voice is pretty loud. I, you probably would have heard me. Um, the 40 jobs will be primarily in uh, what we would call higher skilled jobs, machine operators. Um, each of the facilities will have several shifts um, for machine operators. Loaders, folks that are going to actually load, forklift drivers. And then, of course, you know, some, some salaried folks as well. So even though um, it sounds like, you know, I mean, we're talking about a, a facility that's going to probably produce about $13 million in revenue, um, and 40 people o over that time will be dispersed throughout those types of jobs. It's a great question, though. Any other questions? I do have one. When will you start? Um, as, as soon as we get approval, which uh, we'll, we're hopeful, um, June we will start breaking ground, and then the production will, will start full bore in late October. And you will hire Lorain County. Uh, they president. said you were going to ask that, and the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is our goal. Obviously, we will we'll do everything, you know, to in our in our power to do that, you know, if if we can. And we're we're going to be working with the local technical institute. I think it's JVS. Is that correct? In order to develop a skill uh, skill for hire program as well. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. There's one more question. At the very back. If there is someone in the, who has a question, please come to the microphone up here, please, and identify yourself. Uh, John Bush from Avon Lake. Um, I just want to bring up the point that uh, I've never seen an economic study that ever stated tax abatement creates jobs, retains jobs, and I believe that doing this takes needed revenue away from various uh, schools and other county units that depend on these funds, especially with Sheffield, Sheffield Lake being in the economic crisis they are with the schools. If they wish to be a good neighbor, I would ask why don't they willing to pay the full tax rate that their uh, business would uh, yeah, have to do. Um, if you're to take 20 reasons why a business locates, tax abatement would always be the last reason why they would locate at a particular spot. If all communities offer tax abatement, it becomes a rather mute point. Um, so it goes back to utilities, labor, and so forth. They want an educated workforce, yet they're not willing to pay for it through the schools. And so, uh, and then you're shifting the tax burden to the, to the homeowners. You're, sh you're shrinking that economic pie all the time, every time these tax abatements go through. 
So I, I strongly object to this. I don't mind their business coming in. That's not the problem. But I, I sure wish that they would be willing to pay the taxes like everybody else. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, sir. Unfortunately, a lot of businesses are leaving the state of Ohio because Ohio is the third largest state that taxes its businesses and people. Um, anything to keep employees here. I prefer to have no taxation. And like what they did, which was made a deal with the schools to pay the schools directly. And, I, I, and I'd like to see this kind of stuff, but I prefer to see abatement all, all over because we are losing way too many companies and uh, <laughs> abatement is just an argument that probably we'll have forever. <laughs> Mr. Twining? Yeah, and we took that into consideration during this review and we did and the company was willing to uh, work a deal out with the schools and the schools are willing to accept that and are pleased with that. You have to realize that this company is making a $15 million investment tax abatement is to help them um, with some reduction in taxes for a 10-year period while they're getting back the uh, from their profits part of that uh, $15 million investment that they're making here in Lorain County. So, Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Faison? Aye. Thank you. Yeah. To adjourn. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Blair? A second. Mrs. Faison? Aye. Okay. We are adjourned. All right. I'm going to change tapes. At this time, we'll convene the regular um, board meeting for May 6th of the Lorain County Board of Commissioners, Madam Clerk. First, we have a uh, resolution proclaiming month of May as National Drug Court Month. Is there someone in the uh, group to receive this? Ah, there's someone to receive it. <laughs> this is a um, proclamation in the matter of proclaiming May as National Drug Court Month in Lorain County. I'll give this to you, and then if you have any comments, we'd like to hear from you. Good morning. Um, my name is James Brill. I'm a magistrate with the Lorain County Juvenile Drug Court. Uh, on behalf of Judge Lilly, Judge Boros, Judge Bozinski, Michelle Grove, one of our directors, um, uh, Patty Wilson, who's a director of the Family Drug Court, um, on behalf of our participants, our families, and our staff, we thank the commissioners for this recognition and making um, the month of May, recognizing that it's National Drug Court Month. And we would just like to remind the commissioners that we are, we are having a graduation on May 20th. Three of our participants are graduating, and we would most uh, very much like you to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <coughs> Madam Clerk. <coughs> Under resolutions, one job and family services. <coughs> so moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Basie. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye, with the exception of uh, number 505, Clemens and Nelson. Transfers? So moved. I'll, I'll second it with a note that the transfers were not numbered. And I counted 11 transfers. So with what I saw, that I want to make sure that my second is on the 11 pages that I saw. I think Commissioner Vancey missed some, and that's why I didn't know if you guys are aware. That one's 11? Okay. Which one was that? There is 11. Okay. I just wanted to make a note. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Just somehow missed it. Any further discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Tracy? Aye. There are no advances or repayments. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. I'm, was Clemens and Nelson's on those requisitions? They were when I signed them. Seven, seven, seven dash yeah, and I had an exception to that, correct? Yes. Okay. 
I with that exception. Travel expenses? So <coughs> moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Spacey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye with exception 344. Bills? I'd also like to compliment Judges Bozinski and Boros on the travel. They had pretty good detailed explanations on their travel expenses. So I appreciated that. Sorry. So move. Bills? No. We are Second. Um, discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. I don't believe there was any personal actions. There was no sheet. Mm -mm. So none. The commissioners, 10, approve the county commissioners' meetings and weigh the reading of the same for January 29th, February 19th and 26th, and March 4th, 11th, 15th, and 18th, 2004. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Clark? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Basie? Aye. Authorize the longevity rate of Alice Jasinski, junior magistrate for Lyon City Municipal Court. Bi weekly rate will be from $885.24 to $887.54, which reflects the county's two fifth share. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Basie? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under the Community Development Department, award contract to Minority Electric Company, Inc., Lorraine, in the amount of $8,000 to Stephanie and Sandra Browning at 348 Lynn Drive, Sheffield Lake, for emergency home repair assistance for a roof repair. Five proposals were received, this being the most responsive, complying with specifications, and will be paid from account 22403-2601-45020 in emergency home repair. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under Golden Acres, approve and enter into contract with Genesis Rehabilitation Services, Connect Square, Pennsylvania, and Lorain County Golden Acres for therapy services to include physical, speech, and occupational therapy to residents who require it. Golden Acres has been mandated to become a Medicare certified facility as well as Medicaid. Three companies responded. Mr. Glowacki, administrator, has reviewed and recommends Genesis Rehab Rehabilitation Services. This contract is for a two-year period, effective July 1, 2004, and amount is based on Medicare reimbursement regulations. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Facey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under Job and Family Services, approve and enter into various purchase of service contracts on behalf of Lorain County Department of Job and Family Services for OWF children using TANA funds and authorized director of Job and Families to execute on behalf of the board with prosecutor's <coughs> approval as to form one Common Ground Overland for camperships at Earth Camp for 140 children in the amount of 21000 effective June 21st through August 6, 2004. Little Lighthouse Learning Service Center, Lorain, Ohio, for camperships for 15 children in the sum of $24,246, effective June 7th through August 27, 2004, and Horizon Activity Center, North Olmsted, Ohio, for camperships for 172 children in the sum of $240,680, effective June 14th through August 20th, 2004. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Instruct the clerk to advertise for various requests for proposals on behalf of Lorraine County Department of Job and Families. One, provide services for job training, placement, and retention programs for individuals receiving OWF. This notice will be published in the Chronicle Telegram on May 10th and 17th and bids to be open at 1 p.m. on Monday, May 24th in Commissioner's Public Hearing Room. Two, provide Title 20 services for adult daycare home maker, home health aid, adult shelter, and adult guardianship. This notice will be advertised in the Morning Journal on May 10th and 17th and bids to be open at 1.30 p.m. on Monday, May 24th in the public hearing room. Three, self-exploration, asset, discovery, and environmental education program in conjunction with Pathways program. This notice will be advertised in the Chronicle Telegram on May 10th and 17th and bids to be open at 2 p.m. on Monday, May 24th in the public hearing room. Four, prepaid merchandise cards for school clothes and school clothing related accessories. Notice will be published in the Morning Journal on May 10th and 17th and bids to be open at 2.30 p.m. on Monday, May 24th in the Commissioner's Public Hearing Room. And five, purchase of hardware and software required for back file conversion project, documenting in in imaging project currently being developed by Job and Family. This notice will be advertised in the Morning Journal on May 10th and 17th and bids to be open at 3 p.m. on Monday, May 24th in the Commissioner's Public Hearing Room. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? 
Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under solid waste, approve the 2004 closed loop grants in the amount not to exceed $70,002.11 to be paid from account 20201-5302-490-117, the plan implementation. There were nine communities that applied to purchase products made from recycled materials, and they are required to match 50%. Townships of Carlisle, Grafton, LaGrange, Penfield, and Rochester, villages of LaGrange and Wellington, and cities of Lorraine and North Ridgeville. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Vasey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under transit, amend resolution number 04-141D and 04141E, adopted May 4th, authorizing county administrator to file and execute various applications relating to Lorraine County Transit and inquiring various grants on behalf of Lorraine County to Ohio Department of Transportation for fiscal year 04, 05, and 06 for operating, capital assistance, and rehabilitation of the train center. State said amendments are based upon the Ohio Department of Transportation, Office of Transit, and the defined language that is needed to acquire such grants. This resolution was passed on March 4th. Excuse me, March 4th. Also, I said approval. Yeah. <laughs> Second. Discussion? Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Um, aye. That's the right day. <laughs> That's another. You can worry about that later. <laughs> Workforce Development Agency instructs the clerk to advertise for proposals for WIB Comprehensive Youth Development Program Services for the Workforce Investment Board. This notice will be published in the Chronicle Telegram on May 10th and 17th and bids to be open at 2 p.m. on Thursday, May 27th in the Commissioner's Public Hearing Room. So moved. Second. Discussion. <coughs> Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Under the Sheriff, approve and enter into a contract on behalf of Lorraine County Sheriff with Education Service District 101, Corrections Learning Network, Spokane, Washington, to show educational programs via closed circuit TV for Lorraine County Correctional Facility inmates for educational purposes such as literacy and GED type programming. There is no fee for the service and contracts is perpetual with an immediate cancellation clause. So moved. Second. Discussion. I don't know, would the sheriff like to discuss this at all or no? Sheriff Stamatti, good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is one of those good programs that don't cost anybody anything. So, uh, <laughs> and I give Lieutenant Hammond and uh, Captain Drzdowski credit for looking into this program. It's not only going to help the inmates out with some programming, it's also going to help some of the corrections officers with some of their training. And like I say, once again, it's all free that we got the equipment for. And we can cancel out any time we want. So, okay. this is a good program. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. Mr. Cortez, County Administrator? Thank you. I don't have much this morning except to say that we're moving into the Justice Center as planned this morning. We received our occupancy permit yesterday. It was pretty touch and go right up to the end. But uh, we are moving in on time, uh, which is ahead of schedule. And we are still well on the budget on our project. So you can watch our people, or I should say the prosecutor's people and our maintenance staff uh, moving between the buildings and the moving company that's here today. Um, and to show you the spirit of court that's going on, uh, during the course of planning for this huge move, uh, one of the things I kept telling people is that they had to be rather fluid in how we did things and be very flexible in the move and work cooperatively. And it's my understanding that the prosecutor staff went out and bought T-shirts that said fluid on them and have been wearing them all day, walking back and forth uh, to the Justice Center <laughs> assisting with the move. Uh, so a lot of people are very excited. There's been... I, countless people have been part of this whole project and this whole undertaking while we still have a few more months of moving and we have a lot of small issues that keep cropping up uh, we're having a very successful uh, project and that's due in no short measure uh, to the uh, tremendous amount of support we're getting from the other agencies the department especially those moving and that's really all the comments I have this morning thank you thank you and on behalf of the board I'd like to commend you and Karen Davis and all who have worked on this project it's been a huge huge investment for Lorraine County and I think it's been going along pretty smoothly so far mr. Ernest assistant county prosecutor no report commissioner's report Commissioner Vasey uh, <clears throat> Jerry I see someone here from the visually impaired and I know that you were gonna look up the the issue in regards to the law on that 
I did check that out, and um, uh, the contract as it stands now is lawful um, on a couple of bases. Uh, the statute involves refers to the state and its agencies, so it would not technically apply to the county. Although in the past, out of the spirit of, of the legislation, we have uh, attempted to uh, use those services. Secondly, it appears that the uh, statute does not um, apply to prison facilities either. So okay, we reviewed you. the contract, and it is lawful as stands. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Anything else, Commissioner Basie? Uh, the next, I don't know if you had any comments. The gentleman here from the visually impaired. Uh, if you wish to comment, you have, please come to the microphone. Thank you. And give your name, please. Thank uh, you. My name is David Beltram. I'm a business enterprise specialist with the uh, Bureau of Services for the Visually Impaired Business Enterprise Program. Uh, our program is designed to provide employment opportunities for legally blind individuals. Uh, <clears throat> we do, and I couldn't quite hear all of what Mr. Ennis had to say, but we do have a uh, right of first refusal under federal and state law and all provide food service for in all federal and state facilities. We are in a lot of county and municipal facilities. We agree that we technically we do not have the legal priority under the law, but I think the intent of the law was that at least we'd be offered uh, first opportunity. And really we were here to talk about the termination of our contract to uh, operate the commissary out of the Marine County Jail. Uh, we've been out there since since the 1970s. Uh, there's been a lot of changes over the year. Our current operator, uh, Mr. Rick Bryant, he's been there since December of 1992. Uh, he would be there here today, but uh, we had the manager who operates the snack bar in the vending in this building uh, resigned, and his employee couldn't come today, so he's downstairs operating the snack bar. So. Uh, uh, but we've had a really good relationship with the Sheriff's Department over the years. Uh, what we consider to be a very open relationship. Uh, for example, when in 99 they came to us, they said, you know, we need you to make a little more contribution to the operation of our facility. That's when we agreed on our current commission rate that we pay, which is 13%. And also that they were computerizing their operation and they wished us to do the same for our commissary operation which we agreed to do as i understand there were some complaints regarding our service that came up in last week's meeting it's directly related to computerizing our operations best laid plans do go awry sometimes and uh, basically, a lot of that was due to us being a state agency and requiring to purchase materials from the oil penal industries. And they just did not have the expertise to do the kind of work that we needed done. Uh, but we worked through the problems. Our computer system out there works fine. Uh, we've had absolutely no problems since January. Uh, and during all the time we were having problems, uh, I wrote letters, we met with them daily or weekly to let them know what our progress was. And uh, so we felt everything uh, was going smoothly and we were performing the job that the Sheriff's Department needed. Uh, when, the, when we received the termination letter, we had no idea that they were even considering another vendor. It was never brought to us while well, we're considering another vendor. Uh, these are our problems. This is what we expect you to do. Uh, so it was quite a shock to us and to Mr. Bryan, of course, uh, the commissary being his sole source of income. Uh, he's essentially unemployed. 
at uh, the end of May. And he's temporarily doing this here, but that's a temporary operation. So it's, and uh, we have invested, to, to show our intent, we have invested quite a bit of money in, into our operation out there over the last four and a half years. I think we've put in $58,000 into the commissary operation. And, uh, and we do that because we know we're gonna continue to have a job for a visually, legally blind individual. Uh, We've had a long working relationship with the entire county. Well, as I said, we do the snack bar and the uh, uh, vending in this building, some other vending within county operations. Uh, we just uh, spent over $47,000 uh, for equipment and seating in the new justice center. And that just as a way to show our commitment to, our, uh, to maintaining our operations here. Whenever we've had problems, come to us and we're willing to work with them. Uh, I guess basically we wanted to speak to this today because we're asking, we would ask that this termination be reconsidered. Uh, I don't know if we were at this point what can be done, but uh, uh, this happened so quickly that there was absolutely no way for us to respond quickly in order to uh, maybe do a counter offer, uh, counter offer or whatever. My name is Barbara Pierce, and I'm, the, I'm a Lorain County resident. I live in Oberlin, and I'm president of the National Federation of the Blind of Ohio and the founder of the National Federation of the Blind of Lorain County. I'm here because this is an old story. This is what happens to blind people all the time. We have a 74% unemployment rate. And this kind of bolt out of the blue, once, once the 26% of us have managed to get jobs, it's this kind of a bolt out of the blue that, that comes at us all of the time. And I'm here to say, is this the way Lorain County wants to treat its disabled community? Uh, Mr. Bryant has done his job well. Uh, we all know what it's like to cope with computer problems. Every one of us knows that. But since January, those problems have cleared up. And this does not seem a reasonable, a reasonable way to behave. Uh, this is only one person, but the business enterprise program that is run by the Bureau of Services for the Visually Impaired is an inspiration to the entire blindness community in the state of Ohio. These are across the board some of the best employed people who have the best jobs. And if this is the way the best of us are being treated, then it's pretty discouraging for the rest of us and it's hard for those of us uh, who are volunteering to try to assist and inspire and help newly blind people to make a good case for the fact that we really can be given a chance to compete and be part of our community when this is the way in which the people who have the best jobs and the best chance are being treated. I too have no idea what could be done, but it it seems to me we didn't hear about this until last week. The action was taken. It was a fait accompli. And now we ask you to see whether there's some way to reconsider what has been done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm certainly willing to meet with anyone, answer any questions, anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Does the board have any comment? No. Sheriff, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, Commissioner, we understand very. this is a very emotional issue, and we're not callous out at the Sheriff's Office, you know, to this situation, but I don't believe Mr. Belcher is telling the whole story here. Uh, we have had numerous problems. He has been aware of the problems, uh, and I believe the captain and the lieutenant can reiterate a little bit more on that. Uh, it's, it's, con it's caused us countless man hours to correct a lot of the problems with my corrections officers. And I believe the operation has gotten so big out there, and I, I don't believe he is uh, or the visually impaired or in any county jails in Ohio. 
it's probably except here in Wright County, uh, to my knowledge. I mean, unless he can come up with some different ones, but uh, I'm not saying counties, but I'm talking county jails. And as we've grown, you know, as we get over 400 inmates, uh, you know, there's some inmates that have been triple, double billed, not billed at all. We've had to correct a lot of those mistakes. And Mr. Bryant has been a good employee, but the problem with him is he's coming in now at 2 o'clock in the morning and staying until 9, 10 o'clock at night. And, and is that how we want an employee to work out there? Because uh, he, he's having a hard time that, uh, doing this stuff. And personally, I've been sheriff four years. I've never met Mr. Belcher. I'm not saying he hasn't been out at our jail, but uh, he's been aware of these problems that we're having. I know Lieutenant Hammonds brought it to his attention and Captain Drozdowski. I'll let uh, the captain speak on this because obviously he's had a lot more input on it than I have. Thank you, Sheriff. Morning. Morning. As like the Sheriff said, this wasn't something we took very lightly. Um, I'm going on to Director of Corrections for two years and this has been a continual problem. I like Rick. I have no problem with Rick. But I sit down with my sergeants and my lieutenants all the time, and, and every time commissary day comes up, we have issues. Uh, I have problems with my officers because we have to correct things. Um, as the sheriff said, there was many times Mr. Bryant was coming in at 2 o'clock in the morning, work until 8 o'clock at night because of the issues. We have to, when there's packing errors, when, when, when there's overcharging errors, it, you just don't readjust it because once you take money out of an inmate's account, I have to keep logistics people over to straighten the accounts out. We have people that have been shipped out. We have to readjust accounts, ship, ship checks to the other facilities. We've tried, we've all tried, and, and, and the rehabilitation services tried also. We've gotten to the point where we're growing. Our count for the last six months has been down significantly. And we're still having errors. I know for a fact that Mr. Uh, Sergeant Gordon had spoken to Rick and I believe Mr. Belcher back last fall and says we were looking at other vendors because of the fact that this issue is an ongoing issue. And it was a long time before we can come to this decision that we had to make a move. But logistically, manpower wise, we had to do something. If our counts start going up, which they are, it'll be a nightmare for us. And yes, we've had a good relationship for several years. But as I explained uh, last week, it's an evolutionary process. We have to move on. We have to become more efficient. We have to be able to use our manpower better than what we're using. A lot of my manpower hours are tied up with straightening out commissary problems. I do not in any way want to slam Rick or anybody else. I didn't get into this for this. This was strictly a business decision based on what's best for the county and for Loring County Sheriff's Office, the inmates, everybody. That's all the decision was based on. There was no personal, there was nothing else. I don't like it when I'm accused of throwing people out of their jobs. I don't like that at all, and I've heard it. This was strictly a business decision. It wasn't about money. It was a business decision. How more effectively can we operate? As Mrs. Vasey asked me last week about the 13%, all that money derived from that goes back into inmates for indigent. That's what this is all about. This way there's no money for the county has to produce any kind of money, any kind of funds for this. That's where we're looking at it. I know it's a tough decision we all had to make, and, and it wasn't just my decision or the sheriff's. There was probably a half a dozen people that addressed this issue continually, discussed it, discussed it, and discussed it, and finally a decision had to be made. Now it's our responsibility to run an operation effectively. We had to do it. There was a contract in place. We choose to opt out of the contract. We had a check through our prosecutor. It was completely legal. Everybody was aware of this ahead of time. We did not just come out of the blue and do this. This has been going on for a long time. There's a 30-day clause in this contract, and when that contract, when we advised Mr. Bryant and the people that needed to know that we were looking at opting out of the contract, we were not contacted to discuss the situation. We are now, now that this contract is over with, now people want to talk. It's too late for that. We have to move on. And as hard as the decision it is, we have to move on. Thank you, Captain. Just one more thing. Mr. Bryant does have some vending machines out at where the employees can buy from at the sheriff's office. We intend to have them keep them there if you'd like to keep them there and make some profit off of those. But, but the actual other part, of it actually has gotten too big. Thank you. Commissioner. Thank you for your comments, Sheriff Do <coughs> you have anything further, Commissioner Basie? Uh, well, the only other issue I had was some time ago we discussed the two bells, the bicentennial and the old bell, the 1884 bell. 
and where we would like to locate those. And I'm thinking now that the Justice Center is completed, maybe we're going to have to make a decision. Mr. I mean, uh, do we want them in the Justice Center? Are we going to put one here and one there? Or did you have plans for uh... <coughs> Not my own plans, up to the board, but I had I thought that the board had made a decision on the bicentennial bell for the Justice <coughs> Center. That's why we had the, the mount made, and we made it in two parts so it could be moved in and out of the building. Uh, and we I did talk about it, but we really didn't. I, I don't recall making a decision on both of them. I, I don't think we did anything with these. I think it the, was just a... No, I thought it was just on the bicentennial yeah. bell, not on the, uh, right. the courthouse bell. The, the courthouse oh. bell doesn't belong to us. That belongs well, I know to it our, doesn't belong to us, but we've, we've gotten business. our possession, and it's an, on loan to us for... 90%. <laughs> <right>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, have you thought about it? What would you like? What's your opinion? Or you want to think about it a little longer, make a decision later? What do we want to well, do? Us, um, it's easy for me. I'd like to have them both put over there. Do we have the capabilities to have both of them there? I'd have to take a look. We have some uh, permanent benches going to be installed in the lobby area. They're going to con contain time capsules. Uh, I'll be talking to the board more about that. We had some rather... Uh, large time capsules ordered so that uh, we can par have the community at large participate in uh, that ceremony when we do the ribbon cutting, uh, similar to what we did with the Bicentennial Bell. Uh, why don't I get a floor plan of the, the lobby area and we can uh, scout out some locations. My, my only concern on, the, on the, uh, the, the old courthouse bell is it's very big and very heavy. Uh, that's why we had it in the outer foyer area of this building and we had a massive time getting that that bell in and out of there well the historical society is not going to let us uh, allow us to keep it outside because they don't even want us to get it wet now so it's going to have to go inside one way or another one building or the other i think mr carney is keeping it inside uh i think the trailer is parked inside mm -hmm. the county no, garage he did give us a covered uh trailer mm -hmm. when because of the snow and everything but now we're using the other trailer <clears throat> but we just canvass it. If it starts raining, it's canvassed. Oh, Commissioner, I can do much better than that. I can back it into the J.C. Penney building back in the loading dock there and keep it indoors all the time. Okay, so let me do Well, he is. He's keeping it indoors as long as it's not traveling. So you're going you're gonna to get a floor plan to see what's going on and see if, it, if both bells could fit there? Sure. Okay. Yeah, they've been traveling around the county together, and I think they're just... It would be nice to have them together. Just don't want to separate them now. Now that they've no. been bonding for this last year. <laughs> <laughs> Any further uh, comments, Commissioner Vasey? That's all I had. Thank you, Commissioner Moore. I like the idea of keeping them together. So that's it. I have no report. Old business? None. None. None here. New business? None. None. Board correspondence? Please. No. Second. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Vasey. Uh, it, it's about, you want to do public comment or do you want to do the annexation? This is five after, ten after ten. Well, it's ten o'clock. Let's do the uh, annexation first. We have a continued public hearing on the proposed annexation of approximately 75.45 acres in Eaton Township to the City of Elyria. Attorney John Keyes Walker is the agent. And I understand that uh, there has been a uh, ordinance passed by the City of Elyria um, to um, enter into an agreement with Eaton Township, but that Eaton has not yet seen the agreement or has not agreed to it. Jerry, would you like to elaborate? Yeah. My understanding is that there is still some paperwork to be completed, um, and I believe Mr. John Keyes Walker is here to indicate that uh, the attorneys for the parties are requesting another continuance. Mr. John Keyes Walker. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Schrader, who is the counsel for uh, the Eaton Township uh, trustees, uh, has indicated a desire to possibly continue this for another week uh, to address some issues concerning the paperwork and some uh, details to be worked out yet on this. So we would ask, uh, certainly the petitioners are prepared to honor Mr. Schrader's request, and uh, we would ask that we uh, have another opportunity on this uh, in a week or at the next next meeting as ne appropriate. You wish to continue it for one week then? Yes. yes. I'll make a motion to continue until next Thursday. Second. 10 o'clock. Any further discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Vasey? Aye. Ms. Blair? Okay. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.
uh, now the public comment portion of our meeting. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to the board, would you come to the microphone and identify yourself? How you do? Um, Bruce Bostic from Lorraine, Ohio. Um, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to address this. I, I wanted to speak very briefly on um, the issue of um, an issue that's disrupting our community at this point. It's the uh, negotiations and, and uh, the strike of the, uh, of the SBS employees in, in Sheffield. And while, um, while um, I, I would certainly feel that it's not uh, in the public domain usually to be involved in, in the negotiating process, what I would say is, is, is there something special going on here? We have a situation where uh, really the only thing that appears to be holding up a settlement in a, in a situation where this company is a, uh, is a contractor that's hired by our public and paid by public monies uh, that, are, that are raised by public levies and levies that, that organized labor in our county generally always supports. Uh, to try to to try to help our county, and the only thing that appears to be holding up settlement in this situation is the corporation's insistence on replacing long term long term workers with uh, with scabs replacement workers. This is not how we conduct good faith negotiations in a county like this, where we have organized labor. It has has uh, has has real presence. It's not democratic, uh, and. What I would ask, I'm not standing up here banging on the commissioners. I think the commissioners and, and our public officials in this area have, have, good, uh, have a good history. Um, what I would ask, and, and I would not ask that the, public, that the public officials here be involved in the negotiating process. What I would ask, what I would ask is for the commissioners to take a good look at this situation and verify that what I say is, is true. If this is the situation that... Um, Employees, long-term employees, and incidentally, if this position is taken, the first worker that would be fired would be the president of the union. This is not an accident. If this is what holds up negotiations, causes disruption to public services uh, in, our, in our community, this is a horror. And furthermore, furthermore, it's a safety concern. This company has 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 brought back workers has brought back workers to be scabs. That have that have uh, serious problems on her on her driving record, workers that had previously been discharged. That's a safety problem to these to these uh, parents children to the children of our community. And again, I'm not asking for resolution. I'm not asking for you to for you to be involved in negotiations. But if this is if this is how a contractor working under public public monies in the public domain uh, is is holding up a settlement in this area. It, it seriously affects how labor views a, a, a partnership relationship with our public officials, which we've always had. And we, we really ask the commissioners to take a hard look at this. And, um, and um, we think this is something that, from organized labor's point of view, ought to be resolved and resolved quickly. And, and we'd appreciate your looking into it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Bruce. Good morning, commissioners. David Ashenhurst giving advice in Oberlin. Um, I just wanted to close a loop on something on your agenda that won't appear because there won't be a report coming out of it, but the Northeast Ohio Fair Housing Alliance had its first, uh, the first time it's held its annual meeting in Lorain County was uh, April 29th during your meeting last time. Um, I was there. Kelly Glenn uh, and Latanya Conley worked very hard in, in putting on a very good meeting uh, on the commissioner's behalf and on behalf of your Fair Housing Board. Um, I wanted to thank the commissioners for, for their support of that. And as I say, um, I know it shows up on your agenda when, it, uh, when the invitation first went out. Um, and I'd just like to say that I think uh, Lorain County looked very good at that meeting. Uh, unfortunately, the attendance was not, I think, what we would hope from some of the outlying counties. Um, Lake County, I don't believe, sent folks. I didn't see anybody from, from Lake County. 
um, and Medina and Giago were a little spare as well, but we had a fair number from Cuyahoga and, and a, an assortment of good people from Lorain County. Paul Bellamy uh, was the facilitator of one of the panels on, on financial literacy and, uh, and predatory lending. Again, a very good conference, including um, several representatives of banks uh, in Summit County, as well as Cuyahoga and Lorain County were in attendance. And I just wanted to thank you and thank the Community Development Department and, uh, and all the folks who worked on, who work on fair housing in Lorain County. And last month was fair housing month, but it's over now. Um, so thanks for making it a good month. Thank you, David, for your comments. Anyone else? If not, I move we adjourn. Second. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Ms. Facey? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs> Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Grass clippings, food scrap, garden remains, leaves, all have one thing in common. They can all be composted. All these things will go back to nature using only air and water. Nature will recycle these and numerous other items back into rich soil to benefit your garden or shrubs. Turn it on the ground or tumble it in special drums. Composting saves landfill space and can save you money. Composting can turn into a fun project for the entire family. Every year in Lorain County, hundreds of children are abused and neglected. Many are removed from their homes for their protection. Judges must decide their futures, but they need information to make these critical decisions. You can provide this information through Voices for Children. Volunteers are men and women from all walks of life with no special or legal background who work alongside attorneys, social workers, and other court employees. As an officer of the court, you find out as much as you can about the child. You will review records, interview parents and relatives, foster parents, talk to teachers, neighbors, and most importantly, the child. When the volunteer has a complete profile, he or she appears in court to recommend what is best for the child's future. You've heard the statistics on child abuse. Now is your chance to do something about it. You don't need any special qualifications, only the desire to protect local children who desperately need your help. To become a special advocate or for more information on our next training session, call Voices for Children today. Unsightly litter is often the result of well-intentioned people like you and me being careless at the curb, around business areas, and at work sites. Lucky the ladybug, Ohio's first lady of litter prevention, says nobody wants to live or work around trash. Litter lowers property values and it's costly to clean up. Keep the rain county beautiful. Put the lid on trash. Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning and welcome to the May 6th meeting of the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners. Our first item on our agenda is a um, tax abatement hearing. Uh, I will refer to Mr. Twining from the Community Development Department. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Ron Twining, T-W-I-N-I-N-G, and I'm the Community Development Director for the Board of County Commissioners. 
We're pleased today on behalf of Mayor Anderson with the village of Sheffield to uh, bring to you a tax abatement that they've worked out with a company called Old Castle. Representatives from that company, Jim Jurgens and Kevin Calandra, will be here this or are here this morning to uh, to speak to that. And representing Mayor Anderson is Melanie from her office as well. What this basically is is a 10-year tax abatement at 60% on a $15 million project, and it's going in, we're happy to say, on 40 acres of the former Nissan plant. Um, they are building 37,000 square foot for a paving plant production and 7,000 square foot on a bagging operation. You'll hear more about that in a in a little bit. What we have is the creation of 40 full-time jobs over a three-year period and four part-time jobs that have been guaranteed. The school districts involved, both the Sheffield, Sheffield Lake School District and JVS, have been notified and have accepted the uh, the tax abatement, but they've done that in accordance with the uh, requirements of the ORC. County Prosecutor Innes has looked at that um, on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, as so have our staff, and we are recommending support for this. The village has also approved this by ordinance, I think it was 1972. So at this point, I will turn it over to Kevin, and he would make a presentation which is at your desk. Thank okay. you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Morning. Morning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about Old Castle in general, kind of give you some background and some information, and then I'll uh, turn it over to Jim Jurgens, and Jim will talk specifically about the current prog project that we're talking about. Uh, I'm the general manager for uh, Northeast Ohio, and uh, as I mentioned, Jim Jurgens will be the project and operations manager. Jim will also run the facility. Scott Stratton is the vice president of development for our, our Midwest division and could not be here today. Uh, so who is Old Castle? Well, Old Castle is a division of CRH, which is a holding company out of Dublin, Ireland, but it's a $10 billion multinational company. And we, do, we have three core businesses. And we're really focused on concrete and all concrete products. Uh, we're going to become, this facility become part of the architectural projects group, which has four regions, the Northeast, the West, the South, and the Midwest. We'll become part of the Midwest division of the Old Castle uh, branch of CRH. So what do we do? Well, we do distribution. You've probably seen a lot of the types of uh, activity that we do. Uh, DIY stores, home centers, and specialty shops and things like that. Again, focused only on concrete products. We also do materials. Um, cement, aggregates, asphalt, surfacing, ready-mix concrete, and things like that. Again, what we're discussing today is CRH and Old Castle in general. Jim will talk specifically about the project as we go forward. I'm giving you some background information. And then building products. And this is